Hey, and welcome back for another episode of Quick Tips uh, focused on Xamarin. So we, we've had our intro video. We now want to take it a step further. We're going to run our first project. And just for a reference, uh, we're going to run through a kind of Hello World-ish project, so we're going to keep it really simple. We'll talk about the project structure, and I'm going to go with a shared project uh, versus a PCL, so I'll mention really quickly what that is. And we're going to do it in Visual Studio on my Windows machine, and I'll talk a little bit about how to connect your uh, connect to a Mac if you wanted to run a Mac simulator. Uh, so that is, it's a pretty easy thing to do, so don't worry about that. And the majority of this stuff will carry over regardless of whether you're using Xamarin Studio or Visual Studio. It might look slightly different, but all of the core concepts and the ideas will be the exact same. And actually, these projects, if you save it in, if you create one in Xamarin Studio, push it to GitHub, pull it down, and open it up in Visual Studio on a Windows machine, works the exact same. So it's literally the exact same project. It's made to go across the two different operating systems and the two different IDEs. So there really shouldn't be much that we're missing out there. So let me jump over to Visual Studio and we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so we're back here in Visual Studio. Again, you could do this on your Mac with Xamarin Studio, but we're here in Visual Studio. Uh, and when you download, this is Visual Studio 2015 Community. And when you download that, there's going to be an option uh, under your configuration to see what kind of things you want to include. And you want to you want to include your cross-platform mobile tools. And that's going to include, and you'll have to expand a list to see that. Uh, but you want to make sure that you checkbox all of those different Xamarin tools that come with it. So make sure that you do that. Uh, but just for reference, uh, I'm going to do a new project here under mobile apps. I've got a blank app uh, and then Xamarin Forms shared. So I'm going to spend a lot of my time with Xamarin Forms. And again, this is it's because I think it's so great because you can share UI and I don't do very in-depth UI things. So I can usually share 90 plus percent of my code. And those are the samples that I'm going to focus on. Uh, any of the logic pieces will apply no matter how you do it. Uh, and then you can also choose a Xamarin Forms uh, PCL, so a portable library. Uh, and one of the differences here, uh, there's a couple of differences. They, in theory, work pretty similar. A shared project, basically everything in that shared project just gets copied into uh, your iOS and your Android project uh, when you run it. So it just gets copied into it. Uh, PCLs target uh, like specific versions of .NET. So you can only do things in that that are supported in that version that you're targeted. Uh, in shared, you can uh, do kind of if-def compilation. So we'll see what that is um, in one of the coming videos to do platform-specific things um, that only get executed. If you're checking for Android, it, that line of code only gets executed when you're running on Android. So that's really helpful. Uh, I just I've spent more time with shared projects, so I'm going to stick there. And I'm going to just take this to uh, my desktop and call this hello world and I'm gonna say okay and I should get a prompt here to ask me if I want to connect to um, a Mac machine basically to uh, to be able to run on iOS and I think it will pop up here after it gets done loading so it's it's gonna pull up uh, one of the getting started pages for Xamarin and it's creating the different projects, so that'll take a second. All right, so we got that background page popped up. Um, and then I, I get a prompt here, and I'm actually going to kind of pull up my Mac on the side, uh, that asks me if I want to connect to a uh, Mac machine to be able to basically test my iOS applications on my Mac. So this is really useful because I can do everything from Windows um, and then just kind of do the testing portion on my Mac. So I'm not going to actually do this, but it actually is pretty simple. If you open up the Xamarin iOS uh, build host, you can open that up. You can make a connection as long as you're on the same network. Um, and then from there, you can basically deploy from Visual Studio right to that connected build host. So that's really, really useful. And we might kind of switch back and forth between Visual Studio and Xamarin Studio. Uh, maybe the next video we'll take a, a, a glimpse at Xamarin Studio instead. Uh, but I'm going to just kind of 
skip this for now. Say cancel. And they've got an advertisement here for uh, Charles Petzl is, I would say new, but he's been with Xamarin for a little bit now. Uh, a new evangelist for Xamarin, and he's a pretty, pretty well-respected uh, technologist in the community, online, all that kind of stuff. So he's got a, a free book on Xamarin Forms, and it's actually a really good book that I recommend checking out if you're interested in, in, in using and taking advantage of Xamarin Forms. So I, I definitely recommend checking that out, but I'm going to go ahead and close that for now. So while I'm talking, I'm going to just run this sample application, um, and I'm going to just to get try to get that emulator spun up because I forgot to spin it up originally. But while we're doing that, I'm going to take a second to talk about the project structure here and how this is going to work. So first off, uh, we have the Droid project, we have iOS, and then we have Windows Phone. And we're only going to get the Windows Phone project by default if we're running in Visual Studio on a Windows machine. We're not going to get that on, uh, on your Mac. You're not going to be able to get it. You could add it later on, but you're not going to get it by default. Actually, this application is looks like it's up and running, so it's got a Xamarin splash screen, and it says, Welcome to Xamarin Forms, and the emulator is up. That was actually pretty fast. Uh, so I'm going to stop that. We'll come take a look at some of the code in a second. Uh, but I've got a project for each one of uh, those different platforms, and actually, in a coming video, I'm going to add uh, support for Windows 10, which is really useful, so that's going to be great. Uh, and then notice at the top, uh, I've got a Hello World shared project, and shared is... Uh, denotated by uh, this little icon up here, if you can see that. Uh, and shared, again, means that all of these files get shared, uh, and basically that means gets put into these other projects when they're run. So this app.cs, which is what we have now, is the Xamarin Forms main entry point to the application. So you also will get, if you're familiar with uh, Droid, you'll get your main activity. Uh, iOS, you get your app delegate. Um, and Windows, you should get your uh, app.xaml. Yep, your app.xaml down here. So just know that, that they kind of abstract those, those platform-specific entry points, and they just take you right to this app.cs, which is completely shared. So right now in this app.cs, it's setting main page to a new content page. And the content of that page will be a stack layout. And it's just going to have a label, which is a text object. Uh, it says, welcome to Xamarin Forms. And I'm going to say, change this to welcome to Quick Dev. And just run this really quickly to show you how that works. And that should be updated after we see the splash screen. Welcome to Quick Dev. Very cool. So we're going to make this a little more... A little cooler, I got a little better, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to go in and actually add a content page that we're going to define in its own file, and then we'll assign that to our main page. So under Solution Explorer, I'm going to right click again on the shared project, Hello World, right click, add new item, and a forms content page, and I'll just call this home, home.cs. And it's, it's also good to know you can do Xamarin Forms in C Sharp or in XAML. Uh, the XAML isn't quite there yet, and it, it kind of throws me off because it's different than Windows Development XAML uh, or WinRT XAML. So I kind of do the CS here, uh, or the C Sharp version of the content page, which you can do either one. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. And now they kind of do a similar thing. They do content, new stack layout, label. And I'm getting an error here on the label. For some reason, uh, one of these using statements here um, gets confused between itself and Xamarin Forms label. So I'm just going to get rid of that one. And now we should be error free. So if I wanted to run this content page, I'm going to come back to the app.cs and just erase everything almost and just set main page to a new instance of home. And I get the autocomplete. And get rid of this last semicolon and parentheses, and now I should be good. So now if I run the application, I get the Hello Content page. And I'm going to make this a little neater, so I'm going to organize this a bit more. And I'm just going to say that my whole uh, page is basically going to be in a stack view. I'm going to call it stack. And new stack layout. And close that out. Give it the semicolon. I'm going to do a placeholder here for children. And for some reason, it doesn't give me IntelliSense for this one, but I can assure you it will be okay once I type it in. 
So I'm going to put everything in my stack, uh, stack layout called stack, and then I'll put some children in it. And then at the end, I'm going to say this dot content, I'll probably just say content equals that stack. So everything in this page will, or basically what we're going to set the content to is this uh, stack, and then we'll put stuff in it. So the first thing we might do is give a kind of a, um, a hello world text at the top maybe. So I'll do a label and I'll call it title equals new label and close that one out. And so my text I'll say is hello world. And these are just all the different properties of this label control. So hello world, I might want to center it. So horizontal options equal layout options dot and then center. So we center that. And vertical options equals, and then it's the same thing, layout options dot, I'm going to do start and expand. So start for vertical means that you put it at the top and then it expands down. If you're doing horizontal and started, you would start at the left and expand to the right. And I say expand just to kind of push all the rest of the content down so it's not all right just stacked on each other. You could do that a couple of different ways. But uh, And then lastly, I'm going to do a font size equals and this is kind of cool uh, Xamarin forms gives us some some ways to do kind of abstracted sizes of our font so I'm gonna do device and then get named size and then I'm gonna say named size dot large and I'll explain this in a second and then it's gonna be type of and label so basically what this is saying is that the different platforms have different standards on what a large font is or what a medium font is or what a small font is. So they've kind of abstracted that from us where I can just do a generic large and it's going to be large according to Android, iOS, and Windows Phone, which is kind of cool. So I'll do that. And then I'm going to, um, I'm going to do another label. Um, and this is going to say, I'll just call it uh, click text or click label, whatever you want to call it, equals new label, dun, dun, dun. close that out. And actually, I'm going to copy all of this stuff down and change this to say, click below to say how much you love uh, quick tips. And I'm going to make this one medium instead, medium. And then I'll create a button. So I want to do button, um, and I mean, we'll just call it button equals new button. And in here, similar thing. So text equals click me. And then the, these layout options are going to be the exact same. And actually, I can do just copy those down to do. do. And now I need to say, when I click this button, I want to basically say how much I love quick tips. So I'm going to do one last label, and I'll just copy this one down completely. One last label, and I'll call this uh, result label. Oops. Result label. And I'll start it off by saying, you love quick tips one time or times one uh, times one and all of this stuff will stay the same except I'm going to make this large and so now I want to add a click handler to my button uh, and I can actually do that up here so button uh, dot clicked and if I do the plus equals I'll get some IntelliSense so tab over um, and that'll actually generate a button clicked handler down here and so inside of here, I want to update uh, that text to say how many times basically I've clicked the button uh, and say I love quick tips that much, basically. So I'm going to need a int count equals, I'll start it at one. And then I'm also going to declare our, uh, what did I call it, our result label out here so that I can edit its properties in this function outside of that scope. All right, so now in our click handler, I want to increase our count. So count plus plus. 
and that should be able to pick up, let's see, should be able to pick up that count. So this actually needs to be uh, copied outside of the uh, class F mission. All right, so now I should be able to use that count and just increase that. And then I'll go in and set the result label text equals, and I'm gonna say, I love quick tips. Uh, and then I wanna add that number, so count. And also uh, my X at the end. So I think that's how we did it up here. Oh, no. Well, let me change that to so one times. And now it's going to be count times, which would be one, two, three, four, five, and so on. All right. So let me uh, let me run this back to uh, the Windows Phone. And oh, we got nothing. And that's a that's kind of a big thing that I forget pretty often. We've defined all these different controls, but we need to put them in our stack because that's what becomes the content for our page. So the first one is title, and uh, what's the second one? some kind of label, uh, click label, and then button, and then result label. All right, so now let me try to run this one more time. Give it a second. This Windows Phone emulator is actually uh, pretty quick. So click below to say how much you love uh, quick tips. Click. Um, oh, what would the first one say? Messed it up a little bit. I love quick tips three times, four, five, six. And I. Uh, let's see. This first one, okay, so this should be I, and then it should look consistent. So it just updates that number. So uh, all of this stuff is completely shared, and I'm going to show you that by opening up a uh, an Android uh, emulator and running it to that emulator. And this is actually going to be the Visual Studio emulator uh, for Android. So if I type in Android emulator here in my Windows 10 search bar, there's Visual Studio Emulator for Android. And this is not just specifically included in Visual Studio. This is actually a standalone emulator that you can run to do your Android development. You can run it outside of Visual Studio. It doesn't have to just be Visual Studio uh, for you to run it, which is really, really nice. And this is kind of one of those things that uh, Microsoft is becoming more and more and more open and the things that they support and how they support other platforms. Uh, this is really cool, uh, again, because Microsoft has created a standalone emulator for Android that you don't have to use with Visual Studio. It's really, really cool. You can use this, uh, and I've actually used it uh, yesterday with uh, Android Studio. So again, you can do it straight from there. Uh, let me unlock this, and now we should see the same exact application, except it's going to look slightly different because uh, it's rendered towards those Xamarin Forms controls are, are rendered to look like Android uh, buttons. And this is going to be uh, kind of a high-res 7-inch uh, tablet, so things are going to look a little smaller. Uh, but notice, same interaction here. Click, I love, quick tips, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, title is the same. Here's the text. Everything's kind of spread out. Everything's the exact same. And we would find the exact same thing on iOS, and that would be, uh, we would notice even a different theme there because iOS naturally goes with um, a lighter theme. And this is kind of be the basis of what we do from now on. So thanks again for sticking around for another episode of Quick Tips focused on Xamarin here. Uh, and looking forward to see you in more videos.